You're listening to DraftKings Network. Bada, bada, boom, sold. Huh? Just sold my car on Carvana. Dropping it off and getting paid today. Already? What, you still haven't sold yours? You told me about it months ago. I just... Is the offer good? Oh, the offer's great. Don't have another car yet? I could trade it in for this car I love. Come on, what are we waiting for? Ah, you're right. Let's go. Whether you're looking to sell your car right now or just whenever feels right, go to Carvana.com and sell your car the convenient way. Terms and conditions apply. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. If you're a smoker or dipper looking to make a change, you really only need one reason to do it. But with Zen Nicotine Pouches, you can find many. Zen is America's number one nicotine pouch. It's made with only six simple ingredients. There are lots of options when it comes to nicotine satisfaction, but there's only one Zen. Learn more about Zen and find your reason to make a change by registering online at Zen.com. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugats Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by DraftKings. Stay tuned because you'll hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer throughout the show. DraftKings, the crown is yours. I don't know, Jess. I'm not a huge fan of Halloween decorations. Oh, the what? Yeah. It's so spooky in here. No, this was just... the best surprise to come into work this morning and see spooky little cobwebs everywhere. We appreciate the work. I didn't mean to surprise you. You're clearly eating, so I take know, a second. I know, I was second. in the middle of eating my, my banana bread. But we walked in. You and got there's... her mid-bite, Izzy. Yeah, I'm I mean, sorry. It's yeah. 9.02. I should have known better. <laughs> there's there's this sort of hanging curtain of um, of cobwebs with little, cur- uh, little candles hanging down. Clearly designed by short people. Clearly designed yeah. by short people. Uh, Roy almost burned his hair off this morning walking through there. Well, and I have this, left. What do you have left? And this, these cobwebs sort of all over the microphones, they, they kind of look cool, but to me, they get tired after like 30 seconds. Yeah, they get stuck on everything. Yeah. No, they don't. It's going to be fine. You'll survive. It's two weeks, and then Halloween's over. That's yeah. the other thing. It's, yeah, but it's these decorations long. get in the way. They do cobwebs just get in the way in general. They, they get do. stuck on your clothes. Watch this. I know. I mean, it's it's annoying. Don't let Willow walk through one of those. I mean, that's going to be a disaster. Roy just tried to, like, prove that the cobweb sticks to him and put his work. arm on it, and it didn't work. Didn't I, work. I really uh, wish that was on camera <laughs> yeah. because it's, it's not sticking to you, Roy. Mm-hmm. It's just not. So, no, it's, no, it's well, not. Well, I, for one, Izzy, love what our production staff does, making yeah. everything themed throughout the year. We've yeah. got Valentine's Day, then we got Fourth of July, right. and now we've got this, and then exactly. we got that. Exactly. I love the production staff. Look at them pointing and cheering. And yes, Thank you so much, guys. We love you guys. I would just say be taller. be mad at them for that. Be Taller. Maybe I haven't walked through that area, by the way. Man, yeah. God for that. But no one is blasting the production staff. We're just saying that Halloween, oh, no, no, no. Halloween decorations in general are annoying. They, sure, they I'm, are. Just, yeah. I'm just going out of my way to thank the production okay. staff, not blast them. That's You're a good, You're that's a good job by you. Out and saying, thank yeah. you, Carmen. Who's blasting him? Kristen, thank you out there. Hmm. That's I'm a great Tony. question, Chris. It's a different show. You and I should do that show. Yeah, but concussion speaking, on those candles. Speaking of blasts, uh, Shohei Otani. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> we came in here, and I'm not going to lie, I did not watch the end. I did not watch the last three innings of the baseball game of the uh, NLCS last night, and I didn't know Shohei Otani hit a home run uh, with a couple men on. That's but debatable. Stu, whether it it's debatable whether or not it's a home run. It, for me, it was a foul ball. My personal record book, StuGotsBook.com, by the way, buy it right now. In my personal record book, that was not a home run. I have watched the replay of that a thousand times. I'm telling you it was a foul ball. A foul. And as it relates to Otani, do me a favor. Do it in a big spot. Okay. Uh, I'm ser- I do it with nobody on. <laughs> All this guy does is produce when guys are on base. Do it when no one's on. <laughs> no, he's right. And do it before the game is out of reach. How about that? Not a home run. Yeah. When yeah. the score is 0-0 and you're the only, there's nobody on base, that's a lot of pressure. That's when they need do a home run. nobody yes. on base, Thank Shohei. you, Izzy. Wow. Speaking of foul balls, he hit himself in the nuts with a swing. Mm. Came back right out. Really? That's what yeah. that was. So you weren't he, watching the game. Oh, he, no, no, I was. He started hitting himself in the hip. In the right? hip. And I was like, is that some sort of secret I'm a usually way jump on my heels the... kind of guy. Yeah. That's usually yeah, what gets Yeah, you just got to get motion going. But yeah, hitting himself in the hip was weird. It's... Jeremy is, uh, it, he is, he appears to be a little bit upset with me. I'm not, I'm not I, certain. I'm not even going upset. Right. Just like, I don't even know what to say in right. response to that. I'm pretty sure this postseason, if I have the stats correct, 
he's seven for nine with runners in scoring position with two homers and eight RBI. Mm-hmm. But he is 0 for 22 with, with no one on base. That's what I'm saying. Do it with no one on base. But, he's a one-trick pony, this guy. You right. know how it's easy to get an RBI when dude's already standing on third? Do it with nobody on base, my dude. All right, <laughs> I don't. I don't even have a counter because this is just so counter to what logic says. But that's okay. I'm. I'm. I'm cool. Let's run with it. You're a numbers he's a cho- guy. Yeah, he's a choker without anyone on base. You're when a numbers it guy. Matter. What do the numbers say, that. Jeremy? The numbers what say. Do the numbers say. The numbers Jeremy? say that he's like possibly one of the most important hitters the in the history say, of baseball. The numbers say, as he's, Stugatz pointed out, with yep. nobody on base, mm-hmm. he does nothing. Nothing. Oh, for 22. I mean, listen, you get better pitches when guys are on base, too. They groove them in. There you go. They yeah. put them right down the middle. Yeah, of course they do. I feel like in, in modern baseball, I mean, and, and maybe this is not the case. Just started watching baseball? Um, or I mean, Well, modern baseball, <laughs> oh uh, guys are going for strikeouts <laughs> a little more often than they used to. Pitchers are hunting for strikeouts, and so with runners on base, yeah, they're trying not to bounce it, but I think they're kind of locking in, trying to strike you out. And now Shohei Otani showing he's 17 for his last 20, dating back to the regular season with runners in scoring position. Mm-hmm. That's the highest batting average over a 20 span at bat in 50 years. Yep. But I mean, that's fine. We the, don't have to acknowledge it. The true test of a great hitter is what the hitter does when nobody's on base. Yes. Ask Tony Gwynn, ask Wayne Anybody Bonds, will tell you that. Right. Everybody yeah. will mm-hmm. tell you that. Think of Jeremy. Picture this, okay? Where does Otani bat in the order? Lead off. Exactly. Yep. Who's on base when you bat lead off? Mm-hmm. Nobody. Kike Hernandez right? batting ninth. Nobody. Unless <laughs> it's the 12th inning. Who's got it better than us? <laughs> when you've got nobody on base and it is the first inning, what's a better feeling for your team? than getting a run. Right. It Shohei, funny. do it with nobody on base. Thank when you. your team is up one nothing in the NLCS, you feel like you've got this go. You're going to absolutely win this thing. You'll win the series. He hasn't done that yet. He's choking. Everyone has been talking about whether or not the Dodgers should move him down in the order so that that way Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman are on base for him to be able to do this. The flip side of the argument would be because he's batting leadoff and because these teams are so terrified of seeing him in that leadoff spot, guys like Tommy Edmond, who's batting like 500 in this series against the Mets, and Kike Hernandez, who's been one of the greatest postseason performers ever for his whole career. Crazy. Which is unbelievable. Yes. And he gave Shohei an opportunity last night to get up with the bases. And why empty. is he seeing pitches? Wait, what's Kike doing with nobody on? Ooh, Let me question. go find out. It's yeah, the question. true measure of a great hitter. It's a good question, Chris. Oh, my yeah. God. Mm-hmm. This conversation has Earl Reaver <laughs> rolling over in his grave. People think Stu Gatz is out of takes. This is top 10 yeah. of his career. Thank you. And it just came out, what, on a Thursday in October. Mm-hmm. Like, it's amazing yes. that nobody really thought about that. Mm-hmm. A lot less pressure, a lot harder to score runs with nobody on base. Show, hey, not doing it. Not the greatest ever. I mean, when you're up 4 5 nothing late in the game, and it's clear the Mets don't have any offense going because this series has been ridiculously bad. I know it's 2-1. Mets have a must-win today. But the games have been blowouts, you know? All three of the games have been blowouts. Um, so it's just interesting because, you know, the Dodgers, Otani, to do it late in the game with no pressure and everyone praising because it was a moonshot. It went to the upper deck. It was foul, by the way. But it went to the upper deck. <laughs> no, 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 that's not what we want from the game's best player. We mm-hmm. want him to do it in big spots. He has yet to do it. I'm not saying he's not going to do it. He has yet to do it. That's to your all point, To your yeah. point, Stugatz, Kike Hernandez started the scoring in Thank Game you. 5 with a solo home run there for the Dodgers. Go. So that's clearly, that's the more about. important player for the Dodgers is the guy who's only playing because Miguel Rojas. Kike, is this yes. season with runners on, batting 206. With none on, batting 248. Mm. Wow. Way mm. better. Yeah. You know who's very much like Shohei? Sabrina Ionescu. Oh, Do God. it when you're trailing. That was so good. It was a tie game. Come on. That's an easy bucket. No pressure. Tie game. You miss. You go to overtime. Really? You make your wow. hero. Wow. I mean, I like where you're going, Everybody's but I don't agree. Everybody's I mean, super impressed with Sabrina. It was a tie game. Zero pressure. Right, Jess? Wait. Are you done eating? No. Okay. <laughs> then let's go to Jeremy again. Jeremy? <laughs> Me? <laughs> Sabrina Ionescu. <laughs> tie game. It was from the logo, Izzy. Mm. It was... It was so, so far from the rim. Another it was a reason, great shot. another excuse, right? Oh, it was a deep shot. If she missed it, no big deal. It's the only shot she could get off because it's such a tough spot. Zero pressure, not a big deal.
Zero pressure. <laughs> Bullshit. They're up 2-1 now. That was a road game. That's another thing. You're not down in the series. You're tied in the series. You know, it's a everything about this, series. Everything I mean, about that shot screams tie. He wants her to do it again in a bigger spot. Yes. I just looked up trailing. I just looked up Shohei's full season stats, and yes. he's been better with nobody on. Yeah, this that's year. everyone's stats. Yeah, but postseason mm, because when yeah. no one's on and there's nothing happening, there's not really a lot of pressure on you to do all that much. With runners in scoring position is where you tend to see guys slugging percentages and OPS go down, but with Shohei, every single moment he's come up. With the opportunity to drive in runs, which is the goal in the postseason. Every time you come up, there's an opportunity to drive yourself in. There's an opportunity to drive in a run. No one's arguing he's been great all postseason, by the way. I'm not saying that. He's hitting just over 200. He has not been great. Do it in October. Do it later in October. Those are the two takes. And the third one, do it with nobody on base. Take October. And it's only October. Here's that take. Here's a hitter, Tony Gwynn. For his career with the bases empty, batted 328. That's, I mean, I don't know what the, how do you argue weird. with that? We can't have two Stugatzes hosting the show. I'm sorry. Why not? This is absurd. <laughs> I'm rattled. Mean? What do you mean? It's, it's us versus much. you, okay? At least when it comes to baseball, it's us versus you. If you guys have a counter for why Shohei Otani sucks with the bases empty and how he <laughs> shouldn't be doing better with the bases empty, please offer it. I'm, I'm just really doing a deep dive into Shohei's stats this year. Man, yeah. he's bad with an 0-2 count. Yeah, yeah, he's batting 106 with an 0-2 count this year. Yeah, which is when you need him to be at his best. Jeremy, what are your thoughts there? Mm. What I with an 0-2 count? I'm more bad, Jeremy. He's bad with an 0-2 count. I am more perplexed today at this response to Shohei Otani doing what he's doing than I was when we downplayed that Pete Alonso home run. Which, by the way, at the moment, still one of the biggest homers in Mets history. I forgot about that. On the other side of it, with a 2-0 count, he's batting 583. Hmm. Yeah, when it's easy. This is how stats work. Yeah. Easier pitches. Yeah. I'm going to lose my mind. How, how many of those 2-0 counts do they have guys on base? Talk about easy. Yeah. That's pretty. They don't have that detail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm really joking about the Sabrina Ionescu part because that was absolutely That's disappointing. a baller shot right there. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a little bit more difficult when you're down one. But at that spot, and she hadn't even had a great game. I think she like scored most of her points in the second half, but hadn't had a great game. And then she just pulls up from the logo to win a WNBA Finals game. Like if that happened in an NBA Finals game, we wouldn't have gotten to Shohei. Uh, not probably not. It happened in a Western Conference Final game, I think, with Damian Lillard, didn't it? It wasn't the conference Western finals. Conference Semi Finals. Yeah, 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 to get them to the Western Conference Finals. It's all we talked about the next day. So, right, and now here we are with the with the Liberty, and the Liberty is like they're supposed to win this. Like they, it was supposed to be them or Aces again, and they get to the finals against Minnesota, and then they're down 15 in the second half in a series that's tied 1-1. It looks scary there for a second, and yet this woman, who by the way, she's the one who competed with Steph Curry in that three point contest in the NBA All Star Weekend, and it feels like you know if you watch the Liberty, it's mostly Brianna Stewart just kind of navigating everything. But man, when they need a bucket, they go to Sabrina, and I don't think it gets any better than that. And I think she was talking smack because she was a dub, all, dub, all WNBA second team. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm really happy that she had this moment because she's a player that I think has improved so much year over year, and especially this year is having such a great season. So I'm really glad that she had that. It was 28 feet. That was the distance of okay. the three-point shot in that game. And like you said, like the Liberty started out the game a little slow. They had some a lot of really rough turnovers to start and looked like they were not really comfortable at all playing, but came back and won the game pretty much on that shot. And I mean, we are, we were very close to this going to another overtime, which would have been crazy, but I'm kind of hoping now that the Lynx win the next game because a, I think their home fans deserve to see a finals win at home, but B, I really want this to go to five games because I think the Liberty winning it at Barclays Center in front of all their fans would mm. be pretty awesome. But I, I mean, not I'm not rooting for the Liberty. I'm kind of like agnostic when it comes to this series. I, I'm not like a fan of either team really, but I will claim victory if the Liberty win. Mm. Just putting that out there because oh, how, how does good. how does that work? Because I lived in New York, so I'm just going to be like, oh yeah. I'm so then why don't you just root for them life. instead of just being agnostic? Because I also like Kayla McBride, so. 
So choose a side, though. Seems like a win-win for you. It is a win-win for yeah. me. Yeah. Funny well, how that classic works. Smitty. Learn from the best. I want this thing to go five games because I want Holly Rowe to just put on a display of sideline reporting as long as she possibly can. Like, this, I don't know if it's... It, let me rephrase. It's definitely not just because of the access, because Holly Rowe is phenomenal at what she does. But when you add the access, I am enamored by these halftime interviews like she gets like there's well one on you've the done sc- them <laughs> well not like this <laughs> these halftime interviews and there's one on the screen right now where she's uh, talking to sabrina ionescu and it starts at the edge of the court and then they're just going all the way to the locker room it's a walk and talk you don't really care about what's in front of you i'm sure there's people like elbowing fans out of the way and moving and like it's not just that you've got to watch where you're going you got to think about the questions you got to listen to what the player is telling you but yesterday and i forget who she was interviewing yesterday she walked all the way back with this player asked a final question immediately looks dead in the camera and does an injury report like absolutely <laughs> flawless Incredible. like jumping off of a horse and doing like a break dancing routine like just amazing stuff and i want her to have as many games on the national spotlight as possible <laughs> how about the camera person walking backwards amazing Great oh, job, and yeah. the person holding the light how about yes. the grip uh, yep. The grip, he's back there, he's coiling. Yep. Oh, that's the Backwards. grip. I, I started, no, started looking at the grip the on the camera. microphone. <laughs> you're talking about. That's what I was looking at. <laughs> don't give enough credit to grips. <laughs> no, these grips, they really know what they're doing there. Uh, but yeah, Holly Rowe is amazing. And I've always, and I don't know if I've said this on this show, but I don't know how they don't have a theme song for Holly Rowe. Do you know the Florida Georgia line, this is how we roll? This is This how is we Holly Rowe. Roll. And you just do a Holly Rowe. Uh, I like it. Yeti, get on it. Yeah, we're sweeter. Um, we we failed to talk about something that happened in game two, which was Pablo Torre was oh on the goodness. sideline yeah. of the game. I was at, waiting for that to happen. Liberty game. And so we're going to pull up that photo in a minute. What do you mean sideline? He was sitting courtside? Court yeah. Side, yeah. Okay. It's a very Pablo know. thing. Is Pablo paying like for quarters. tickets here? What's going on here? He's not paying for anything. I think he's mm. friends with Sudeikis. Mm. What is this stance? He looks like a superhero who just came in to tell you how to set the table. What is he like? Wearing? He looks absolutely ridiculous in this dance. He's like a school principal. Yes, <laughs> a, a very proud school principal. Like he's, he's there at the, at the right pep now. rally celebrating the no, state like his, champs. His high school team just won the state championship, and he's there like, girls, I can't wait to see you <laughs> yeah. in third period tomorrow. <laughs> Do we know what play happened right before this? Because yeah, why is he standing like that? Yeah. Like, he's Pablo. He's kind of doing I mean, like a superhero pose right now with his hands, his knuckles his on his fists. hips. He's closed fist on his hips, like chest, as much as you can call that a Why chest, shirt Protru- protruding. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> it lo- everybody else is celebrating as if a player had gotten an and one, and he's just proudly sticking out his chest. He, like, yeah, they're clearly cheering for a player, and Pablo's acting as if the applause is for him. Well, I so I'm not gonna so much crush the stance here, but the face. He's making like that ope face that like yeah. I make when I'm kind of like smirking at someone that I'm trying to yeah. get past. I'm like, oh, excuse me, and then I kind of like do that flat smile thing. Yes. It's like that awkward smile that's not a real smile. That's and that's a I'm nitpick, but is he going a little too far with the mustache now? It's like off the edge. Have yeah. we talked about this? Yeah. Because yeah. it looks like he could like stick his tongue out and like maybe tie the edge of his mustache into a braid if he had those types of skills. <laughs> it's going too long. You've got to trim that. He's got a little tummy. I mean, I think he's standing oh. that way because he knew. <laughs> I'm no one to talk. A if little that, tummy. If that's a tummy, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, come on. What are we I, don't know what I'm doing. I take his tummy. You're right. I apologize, Pablo. <laughs> it's a little tummy to match his little chest. <laughs> oh, damn, man. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> he's standing like that. Because he knows somebody is going to take a picture of him, and he's just bragging about his seats. That is him standing there saying, look at me. I'm at the front row of a WNBA Finals game. Yes. But doing it while he's smiling for some reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is exactly what is, uh, what is happening there. Take it from someone who would do something like that. That is what Pablo Torre is doing. You he think is... that's his cousin next to him invited, to the, invited him to the game? I have no idea. I do think that Pablo, had he not made it in sports media, probably would have been a principal, right? Mm. <laughs> a school principal? He wouldn't have been a principal. He would have been a headmaster. Oh, a headmaster. A You're head right. Master. In a private uh, school. Yes. yes. Right. He would talk down to the students, yes. not to them. Exactly. <laughs> like he does us. Guys, I had an I had an odd morning, and I want to know how odd it was. And I'm sorry, what Ooh, happened? Tell me. So, 
What's the line on? All right, so I woke up around 4:30. My alarm doesn't go off till like I don't need to get out of bed till like 6:30. Alarm usually goes off around 6. 4:30, I wake up, and I'm like, this is one. Like I needed to shower in the morning because I had bowling last night. Sometimes I shower at night, so it just depends on the day whether I need to shower in the morning. And this was a morning where I need to shower, so I'm like, it's 4:30. I think I want to shower right now, brush my teeth, and then hop back into bed for like an hour and a half. What? Wake up your wife. And so I did that. What? I sh- at like 4.30 this morning, I showered, mm-hmm. I brushed my teeth, and then I woke up at like 6, and I'm like, do I need to brush my teeth again? I was like, morning breath, and it, it, I still kind of tasted the toothpaste, so I didn't brush my teeth again. <laughs> this is the oddity of your morning. Wait, this is what you've been what? sitting there. driving. It's an odd morning. driving though. to work it, this morning oh, and being oh. like, man, I, was, I went home last night. I was a little sweaty from bowling, but not too sweaty. No, so no, I this is not the odd just part. just go to bed. The 4.30, <laughs> the 4.30 shower is the odd part. And like, then, so how do you decide? You said you still tasted a little bit of toothpaste. I woke up to pee at 4.30 and I'm like peeing and I'm like, should I shower now or go back to sleep and shower at 6? Right. And so I showered. Yeah. Which is honestly not that strange. My wife like didn't even like notice it really. Well, she was sleeping. Right. But the shower's like Wait, in so, them. So you actually fell back asleep after oh, yeah. the shower? After oh, the shower. That's, that's impossible. That's the impossible. Right. To me. Yes. You are so skilled. Fully nude. <laughs> Baby. I mean, what do you want? I believe you. I can, Dude. I, once you get out of the shower, what am I going to put shower. like like I just just I mean, fully just dry nude. off first? Yeah, I dried off. Yes, I did dry off. Use the sheets. Well, the question is, Use the what's sheets. the amount of time to go back to sleep where you have to brush your teeth again. Here's the That's rule that the I live by. If you have to ask whether or not you should brush your teeth again, you brush should your brush teeth. your teeth again. Yeah. I yeah. brushed them at 430. I you were asking yourself for a reason, Chris. Bro, I smell my breath. No. <laughs> I think it's fine. Are you a coffee drinker? No. Okay. Because what I was going to say is you can go ahead and drink your coffee and then brush your teeth again because that's kind of helpful for your teeth. Mm. Uh, But if you're not a coffee drinker, that doesn't matter. Uh, To me, I feel like you can feel it in the heat of your breath. I felt the toothpaste still. If I I felt sleepy, that sleepy taste, I would have brushed again. But I woke up. And I still had a little mintiness, a little mintiness going on there. So I'm so like, you know what? That would last a day. We're good. <laughs> you woke up. Did you go through the whole waking up process again where you sat there for like half an hour and you're just like, whew, okay, now I'm awake? Or did you wake up and be like, wow, I don't have to shower. I don't have to brush my teeth. This is amazing. It, I'm awake. It was a nice snooze of I don't have to get up for the shower now. Like I'm clean, so I can just snooze a little, like one extra snooze. For right. those who don't know, old Chris, young Chris Cody rather, would um, go wake up and then lay down in this bathtub wow, to get a really little bit extra rest. Quite so, the callback. <laughs> so yes, was in high school, in the so high, how do you play, Chris? In high school, I had been known to just lay down in the bathtub. <laughs> Which is the, the bath, grossest thing in the, in the world shower, to me not a bath. because I hate drains. I hate shower drains, <laughs> the most disgusting thing in the world. Salt Burn is one of the grossest movies of all time. No, it's uh, right. But you being able, more crazy skill than just like getting up and being able to lay down in your bed in your shower is getting back to sleep after the shower. I'm tired, guys. It's yeah. five o'clock in the morning. Like <laughs> this is not very it's very easy for me to go back to but sleep. But the shower wakes you up, does right. it not? Do you like you're in that shower and you're like eyes closed, like no water gets in your eyes, you just and then you just shut them right back when you get to the bed. I manage. Mm-hmm. I pulled it off, guys. <laughs> but it is supposed to be something that gets your day started, not put you back to sleep. I mean not for me. Okay. I just need to get clean. Okay. It's your shower. I feel like if you wanted to, if you really wanted to just get rid of a lot of the morning uh, procedures and get a little extra sleep, just keep a little toothpaste by the bed, right? Just put some, whenever you wake up, just put some on the teeth. And when you wake up, you're just like, no bad ideas. I still, I still feel the <laughs> toothpaste. Don't have to brush my teeth. Snooze for another 10 minutes. Well, thanks for nothing, because I haven't gotten an answer to my question on whether this is okay. You I guys, think you're, everyone's you're welcome. Just, everyone's just kind of staring at me and not We're just saying waiting for Jeremy I, to smell your breath. Should I have brushed my teeth again? Yes, I told okay. you. If you have to hurts. ask yourself, then you have to brush. But I, mean, I tasted the, the toothpaste. It's not a bad thing to brush your teeth again, but also, this is essentially like, does everyone brush their teeth after taking a nap? Because no, that's essentially what not. you did. A little bit of mouthwash. So then you're good. I think you're. I think Thank you're you. overthinking it. Thank I think Listerine. it's fine. Thank you. But it also doesn't hurt to just do it. Yeah. You got a hot mouth. You got to brush your teeth. Health. Stigatier, having a quality home security system in your home is so important. 
You want to have peace of mind when you're away. And of course, you want to protect your family and your valuables. That's why I've had Simply Safe in my home for seven years now. I swear by him. I want you to have the same peace of mind I and so many listeners experience every day, which is why I partnered with Simply Safe to offer Levitard Show listeners 50% off a new system. Visit simplysafe.com slash DLV. Old school security systems only act once someone is already inside your home. Simply Safe is changing that with its new Active Guard outside protection, which prevents crime before it happens. With Active Guard, live monitoring agents keep watch outside your home. If anyone is loitering or behaving suspiciously, the live guards can see them, speak to them, activate loud sirens and spotlights to scare them off, and even request urgent police dispatch, all before they even have the chance to kick in a door or window. Right now, all Levitard listeners will get 50% off any new Simply Safe system. Visit simplysafe.com slash DLB to claim this offer. It's only for a limited time. So be sure to order today. That's simplysafe.com slash DLB. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Stu Gatz here. I'm always looking to improve my golf game. Who's not? Hit the ball straighter, further, not having to worry about trying to hit everything perfect to make a good shot, all of it. I headed over for a fitting at a PXG location near me and upgraded the gloves in my bag. The fitting experience was phenomenal. Right by my house, Steve, the fitter for PXG, was amazing. I walked in with one set of clubs and I left with a brand new set of PXG clubs and they are the absolute best. I have the Gen 7 irons, 10 years in the making. New PXG Gen 7 irons are the greatest leap forward in technology and performance in PXG history. PXG Gen 7s are the first irons to push ball speed to the official USGA limit. Gen 7 irons deliver groundbreaking new levels of feel, forgiveness, speed, and distance. Upgrade your bet with PXG clubs and take your game to a whole new level for a limited time. You can save $10 per club. Head over to pxg.com slash Dan and use code Dan at checkout. That's pxg.com slash Dan, code Dan, to save $10 per club on your order. pxg.com slash Dan, code Dan. Folks, listen up. It promises to be a month of tricks, treats, and of course, touchdowns. And DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is the number one place to bet on touchdowns. New to DraftKings? Try betting on something simple, like a player to score a touchdown. Go to DraftKings Sportsbook app and make your pick. Here's the reason for new customers to do a touchdown dance of their own. Bet $5 to get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code DAN. That's code DAN for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash FT ball. Don Lebatard. And I feel like Rebecca, I can't pronounce her her last name, but she's a great Andragi. 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 That, that's why you're good, man. I gotta tell you. I feel like her jumps, her vaults were better. She stuck the landing on both. She should have won the goal. The only reason she didn't is because her name is not Simone Biles. Your thoughts. Stugats. No. This is the Don Lebatar show with the Stugat. We've got Diana Rossini. She's a senior NFL writer for The Athletic. She's got a podcast, Scoop City, which I hear is very popular. She was with us earlier this this week from the owners' meetings. A lot of good information coming out of there. She's loaded with good information. But, Diana, I have to start you here because Chris ended the last segment, Chris Cody did, with a very difficult question that nobody had a really solid answer to. She's going to love this. So I'm going to have him set it up for you and see what you think here. Hmm. Diane, I usually wake up around 6 a.m. to get out of bed, 6.30. I had to shower this morning, had bowling last night. You know the routine. you got to just shower in the morning. So I wake up at 4.30. No, 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 pause. (laughs) Um... Is that the routine, Diana? You just you get a little sweaty at bowling, so you wait till the next morning to shower. I didn't. I wasn't sure if he said bowling, but he he said bowling, right? Like he did. Like, first yes. of all, I don't know how sweaty you're getting at bowling, Izzy. I wouldn't say I was sweating right. at bowling. All right. Well, but, you use one of those little fans right over where you know collect the ball. That, what? That, 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 
I that do helps put my hand with... there. I do put my hand there. It feels nice. Those shoes it does, yeah. You're wearing those shoes, though. It's an underrated it's feeling. What do the yeah. shoes have to do with me sweating? Finish your story, right. though. Let's I end a rule on this. Are, you don't think I have my own shoes, Roy? Come on. The dirty Chris. The question is, do I think it's disgusting that you went to bed after bowling at a you know at a public place where people are touching a lot of Bowling ball, balls. Oh, enough balling. That's the first yeah. question. Oh, That's, yeah, Izzy, you shower every single time you Everyone home. slow down. Yes, that is the first question, Diana. Please answer that question, yes. Yeah, I think it's pretty disgusting okay. that you didn't take a shower last night before you got in your bed. <laughs> you guys are all just... Here's part two, then. Now finish the story. Chris. Okay, so I wake up at 4.30, and I'm like, okay, I got to get up at 6, so I get up to pee, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to get this out of the way. I'm going to shower at 4.30. I'm going to brush my teeth. And then I got done around 4.45, get back into bed. I got like an hour 15 to go back to sleep. So I wake up at like 6. The question is, do I have to brush my teeth again? I I can still taste the toothpaste from an hour and 15 minutes ago. Hmm. And you would say that that rest that you got after the shower, was did you get into a good deep REM sleep? Delightful sleep, I'd Mm -hmm. say. Yeah. A delightful, oh, then definitely. But I, I mean, but I taste your mouth the is cl- just think about it. Your mouth is closed, probably. Well, it depends on how you no, I'm like, <sighs> I told you about that. I told you all you got to do is tell your body not today and breathe through your nose and then you do it. You did it for a while and then you stop. But I'm Why? like this. <sighs> I guess I think of like I just flew back from Atlanta um, and it's, it was only a two hour flight. That's a great call. If that. And the guy next to me was was pleasant and nice. And I was talking to him w- when we took off and he fell asleep. And he finished the conversation with me when we landed and his breath stunk and it was only a quick flight. And and it wasn't a stink like, like an Italian hero or like a, like a tuna sandwich. It was just, it was that sleep breath. You know, everyone knows that sleep breath. Of course. Yes. 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 That is such a great call, Diana. Now, most of the times it's on red eye, but there have been other times. Man, I am sweating today. Um, There's been other times. You should go shower right now. It's disgusting. (laughs) You're gross. How do you even come here while you're sweating? (laughs) You get off a plane, Diana, and you're walking toward the front if you don't sit in the front like Dan. And you just get just whiffs of bad breath smell. And it's just like, yeah, this answers the question. I think officially, Chris, you absolutely should have brushed your teeth. Right, yeah, what? it's a sleep breath. Just a little mouthwash, swish it around a little bit. So so you didn't. You just got up, started your day. That's so- right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Roy smelled my breath. He said it's fine. I, I did not. <laughs> so what were you doing then? <laughs> just I bet you that mic stinks. <laughs> Looking at Otani stats. <laughs> Uh, the la- the, uh, the last time we left you, you were at the owner's you okay? meeting. No, I don't know what happened there. I'm laughing at Chris. It's it's amazing that you woke up. And- really, the amazing part of all of this is that you took a shower at 4.30 and went back to bed. Yeah, that's amazing. That is the- because that is impossible, okay? I did it. But I want to talk to Diana because the last time we left her, she was at the NFL owner's meetings. Her real job got in the way, and she had to leave us. And so I am wondering... Uh, how this Devontae Adams trade came to fruition here. Yeah, I, I feel like the last few appearances have been a bit of a train wreck here. Um, I was a little hesitant to hopping back on because you guys have now become the show that I am on when news is breaking. So yeah. I, I just I'm on. I don't want to deal with news today. Like I, I, need, I just need like a couple hours. Yeah. Um. So please, no jokes, guys. Just like keep me alert. Right? I'm focused on the camera. I'm not going to look at my phone. OK, but just. If it's serious, break in and don't 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 mess with me because I, I I'm just not in a good state. I All was right. gonna have Chris hit the sounder, but your face really looks like you're in a bad state. Like you would like a fall apart if you heard it again. Well, is you know what it was? I went back and watched when I was on with with you guys, um, because mm. in the moment I remember thinking, oh, that felt really urgent. I just told them that the Devonte Adams trade happened. I was able to give them some intel that 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 Devonte was in the building and I was working in real time. But if you go back and look at that video, I look like I'm freaked out. Like someone has a gun to my head. My eyes are bigger than a deer in the headlights. <laughs> um, and, and it's just my self-awareness is so off because I didn't think I sounded or looked like that, but it was 
a horrible appearance. I felt so bad. I, I, I reached out to everyone on the show to apologize uh, because it just it was so insane. But it just there was a lot going on. I was Izzy. I was in the lobby of the hotel where all the owners were coming in. Hmm. The Devonte Adams story breaks. Woody Johnson's in there. There, there was it was it was very chaotic, and I did not carry it well. It was the um, face of a reporter, Diana. If I were to ever imagine the face of a panicked reporter, it was that you were just doing your job. But I didn't know I worked like that. Mm. That's why I'm upset about it. I thought I was like a duck and my legs were moving really quick, but I'm smooth. Guess what? I'm not. I am not smooth. <laughs> I'm just a tornado. Like, like I'm, I'm literally a Tasmanian devil. I got my batteries, my wires, my, my cell phone, but then just my face in general looks freaked out. So I'm going to work on that and just try to try to do a better job of faking it maybe. Uh, because look, it's an adrenaline rush. And especially when you can't work because you're doing another job, which is this awesome show. Um, I kept getting stressed that I was going to get beat on little nuggets that were happening in that moment with the Devonte Adams trade. So now to your question, Stu, he's in New York. Everyone seems happy. Um, Aaron Rodgers gets his guy. And, and Woody was not going to mess this up. He was not going to let this deal fall through, which is why when I got the tip on Monday night, that it was happening for real and Devonta was getting on a plane. Um, I thought it was just so wild how automatic this thing was. Even though the Steelers and the Saints were in on it, the Bills were lurking, um, the Jets wanted to make sure they were going to give Aaron everything he absolutely wanted. And, and Woody confirmed it. Which owner has the worst breath? Great question. <laughs> Thank um, you. God, it is such a good question because I did go up to a lot of them and... <laughs> You worry about yourself first, right? Because um, in that situation, I try not to remember that the person I'm talking to is worth, I don't know, $20 billion in most cases. Um, and I try to treat them as human as possible. So I've actually done that in my mind where how can I humanize them? And I just imagine them like going to the bathroom <laughs> or doing something that I do, like parallel parking, like, like do something that I do. Which, <laughs> We know that's not what they're doing. They have drivers and <laughs> private jets and but, but it's David Tepper. <laughs> so David Tepper did not he was not there actually. He was not there. I was looking for him. I like talking to him. He's yeah. actually I I've enjoyed my interactions with David and Nicole Tepper there. Nicole Tepper especially is awesome. Uh if the question was who would you want to hang out with of the owners, it would be Nicole Tepper. No one even comes close. So I don't know. I mean, I talked to Jerry and he's just, Jerry just kind of smells like old man. Right. Mm, you yeah, know, yeah. like not in a bad way. Sure. Just like. There's no it, good it, way to smell like old man, Diana. It's like, it's, it's like what your grandpa smells like. Like it's just. Right, it, right. We know the you smell. You know, like you're yeah. like, oh, I, I know that smell. Yeah. Like, they had are their you vitamins. wearing a diaper? They, they definitely had their medication. Like, you know, like there, there is. Definitely that scent, but otherwise everything else about him is 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 young, uh, in terms of how he carries himself. So I didn't. I I would look. I was an inch from Woody. Um, hey I got stuck in Izzy. You know this. You know when you're in the scrum of reporters, and the positioning of where you are is important. Very important. Not for the content, but just for your overall like mm -hmm. like comfort. Like I'm always the jerk that gets stuck. Like on one knee, yep. you know, like holding it up. Just, it's so uncomfortable. I'm a big sweater, um, Diana. I don't know if you could, I don't know if you can see me right now, but if I put my hands up in the air, yeah, it, looks like, I, it. <laughs> it yeah. looks like I've yeah. been playing basketball all day. Gross. I was always in a position where I was holding my arm up and you could see my sweat stain, or I'm just dripping sweat from my forehead because I'm like nervous that I'm in the middle of this pack. Yes, and then of course the camera, from the other networks is, you know, it's on you, right? So mm -hmm. if you're not doing TV work, it's like, of course I'm in the shot with my <laughs> armpits up with, with you know, a waterfall. Um, and look, I'm sure this isn't breaking news to you guys, but I, I've i never been in a scrum that doesn't stink. So mm -hmm. someone smells, um, which, you know, sports reporters working hard, stressed, drinking too much coffee, probably not exercising. There's, just, there's a lot of issues there, but I, I worry about it a lot. Because my I've been around so many stinky reporters that I just I could not imagine if that was me. And the thing is, it probably has been me at one point, mm. you know, so um, 
I th- I just think this full we've come full circle on just body odor and and hygiene here, um, because I can tell you those scrums that someone someone smells bad. Uh, Philadelphia. <laughs> No, it did not happen. Ah, the world what? of the NFL. No, no, Actual, no, not joking, no, no, breaking news no, per Adam no. Schefter. We can't the, do this to her. The Tennessee Titans are granting the request of former Pro Bowl safety Jamal Adams for his release. According to Schefter, he is healthy and looking forward to his next opportunity. Back to you, Diana. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why did you say the Tennessee uh, Excuse me, why did you say the Philadelphia Eagles? I said the Tennessee Titans, did I not? Yeah. <laughs> Did you someone say Eagles? I, I was headed towards a Philadelphia Eagles okay, question. Thank you. That's what I heard. They I heard broke Eagles in with a Tennessee Titans. You sound you're right. But the Titan Jamal, that's not a big enough story for you. You're good, right? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Diana, no, no, no. I have to apologize. What? I have to apologize because I was just looking at her face the whole time. We scared and her. And she was absolutely devastated. She's okay. And with like it. those, Diana, don't watch this show back because those 30 <laughs> seconds where you picked up your phone and you're like listening because you heard Eagles and you thought it was that serious, I'm telling you, it was the same look that you had on your face from a few days ago. The, the, the Philly thing got me. And, mm. and it's not because I think Philly's doing anything big right now. It's not like I don't know anything. Right. It was just more, oh, Bless God, you. here we go. Um, knowing that they've got a big game, Saquon Barkley back up against the Giants, going home. There's just, and there's so much drama. I mean, this isn't happening from what I can gather, but I thought I thought maybe that was going to be a Nick Sirianni firing. I was, like I was wondering, your husband, as an Eagles fan, does he side with Sirianni because I do, or does he side with the fans who want to fire Nick Sirianni? Yeah, he he's so beyond Nick Sirianni at this point. Really? But, but Kev does this thing where... Like, he tries to be rational with me because I think he wants to show me that he is a smart fan and he is um, a, a, just a normal human being. So he, like, fights the demon of the lunacy. Um, so he'll be like, God, what a clown, man. Like, we got we, we need better. We, we need a guy in there. But then I, I, I'll look at him watching the YouTube things and he'll watch everything Sirianni's doing in all the clips. And I think he's the dude that's commenting like, keep up. He knows what he's doing. I mean, he Nick Sirianni kind of represents a lot of Philly in, in, in the best and worst ways, right? Yes, yes. So much emotion, so much passion, but not great. Yeah, but great because he's the only coach in Eagles history that has taken his team to the playoffs three his first three seasons – and they were a play away from winning the Super Bowl. Look like at a, the roster. Uh, I, I understand that, but he did it. He was the coach. He was the guy in charge. No, I, I'm not, I, I don't have anything against Nick Sirianni. And, and what you just laid out is why Howie Roseman did not fire him. Yes. Right? Because of what his – how do you fire a guy that's been to the playoffs that many times? You can't. You can't. Right. You, he's doing something right. Mm-hmm. But my problem with what he's doing is – he is supposed to represent this organization. He is the CEO. They're the ones who use that. I don't even call him that. They call him the CEO because that was the job that they changed him to. They took him off play calling to make him that. You want your CEO barking at fans, talking trash to the players? Then there is no way Jeffrey Lurie likes that. There is no way. I don't care how um, open-minded Eagles fans are because of their passion. There, there, there's just no way that's good, which is why Nick Sirianni apologized the next day. Diane, I think we can all agree the moment he cut his hair in a bit of a desperation, I didn't like that. I thought that was a sign of weakness. He should have kept the hair because it feels like, hey, I need to change things up. I need to change the swag a little bit. So let me go with the buzz cut and see if that changes things. They won, obviously, against a terrible Cleveland Browns team, but I thought that was a sign of weakness. Yeah, I don't know if swag was the word I used when I saw it. I definitely went more, oh, good. I think you're so bad. Tony, I think you're playing the results we will, there. Jess, you know, Jess, how many times have you done that? Not Where, a lot. Desperation haircut? Oh, not Buzz honestly, cut? not a lot. I but I was gonna say that the opposite of that with Eberflus growing the beard and growing out the hair. Everyone thought it looked really good, and then they played pretty bad their first couple games, and everyone's like, "That beard's stupid," and now the beard looks hot again. So yeah. you're playing the results. Yeah, he the glow up. Even like Oberick, like he's another one. Like I'm like. He's too put together to be a head coach. Like, he's too clean. And Dayball. He looks great. Diana, I think it's it's consensus. There is nothing you can do to Nick Sirianni to make him look like a CEO. So they should probably lose the title or lose the coach. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how this season's going to shape up, but 
I, I don't think anyone in behind the scenes is going, yes, th th this is what we want to be about. I can tell you, though, um, they're calmer there than we are about them, hmm. which Philly's pretty uptight about what people say about them. Uh, my co-host um, of Scoop City, Chase Daniel, was was in Philly for a year, and he was telling me that that Philly locker room has rabbit ears like no other team he's ever been on. And he's played on seven different teams. He's like, they listen to everything everyone says about them. That's just like the, the culture because it's, how, how could you ignore it in Philly, right? It's so loud there. Everything they do is loud. That, it's the only city that could win a game against the Browns. And on Monday, you know, WIP is screaming about how bad they're, they are. Uh, and, and granted, I know, I know it wasn't the best game for Philly, but um, the demands are high there and then and the bar is high. Um, but 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 they know what's up and they, they they seem to be kind of riding the ship. So we'll see how they do against the Giants. I have to think this part of Sirianni you actually respect and you agree with it because I, I could see you doing something similar. How do you feel about him after the game using his kid as a shield from the media? <laughs> it's such a Stugatz move. It was so Stugatz. Like, I am going to use you, my beautiful children, as shields. Um, and and I feel like you think I can relate to it because you think I would use my children to to somehow further myself in I, my career. I have no doubt. Yes. Um. No, I, I probably should do a better job with that. Um, I put my children in danger to, to get the job, as we know, which, by the way, for, for, for those that have followed the fire issues that I've had in my house with my son uh, microwaving my, my, my wallet and, and Joey thinking it's his birthday every day, I, I almost um, sent in a video. It was Joey's actual birthday. Oh, my God. Uh, on Friday. And the kid just, like, just... The whole time during the song. Um, so all that practice that he's had blowing out candles in our house, uh, you know, I guess I guess it's panned out. Um, happy birthday to Joey, Diana. Yeah, Tell him because Joey. every day is his birthday. She's yeah. a senior NFL writer for The Athletic. The podcast is Scoop City. I hope this ride down the Lazy River was a little more calming than the last time we were on the show. I know you had the one little scare, but there's occasional falls on a Lazy River, so... I credit you. I'm just glad you're here today. Oh, for some you. reason, when it's Dan and Stu, it, it, it just it doesn't work. So right, we'll see fault. what happens yeah. on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I'll see you guys next week. All right, Dan, we'll be back. I'll try to kick him out. <laughs> I need meds. That's what I need. Sticking out here, having a quality home security system in your home is so important. You want to have peace of mind when you're away. And of course, you want to protect your family and your valuables. That's why I've had Simply Safe in my home for seven years now. I swear by him. I want you to have the same peace of mind I and so many listeners experience every day, which is why I partnered with Simply Safe to offer Levitard Show listeners 50% off a new system. Visit simplysafe.com slash DLB. Old school security systems only act once someone is already inside your home. Simply Safe is changing that with its new Active Guard outside protection, which prevents crime before it happens. With Active Guard, live monitoring agents keep watch outside your home. If anyone is loitering or behaving suspiciously, the live guards can see them, speak to them, activate loud sirens and spotlights to scare them off, and even request urgent police dispatch, all before they even have the chance to kick in a door or window. Right now, all Levitard listeners will get 50% off any new Simply Safe system. Visit simplysafe.com slash DLB to claim this offer. It's only for a limited time. So be sure to order today. That's simplysafe.com slash DLB. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Decisions, decisions. Wait a minute. Are you still looking for cars on Carvana? Yeah. Decisions, decisions. When I use Carvana, I found the exact car I was looking for in minutes. Bought it on the spot. Electric or full diesel? Decisions. Come on. You've been at it for weeks. Just buy it already. You're right. Crossover it is. Decisions decided. Whether you know exactly what you want or like to take your time, buy your car the convenient way with Carvana. 